Hey, what's going on, my friends? It's Dave Sharp. Welcome to Wake Up Legendary. And my friends, uh, it is another wonderful day here in the land of legendary, my friends, because you guessed it. We have yet another amazing guest. That's right. I'm still in the Mastermind Mansion here in Orlando, Florida. This is my last morning here. And uh, we are getting ready to all head out. Sorry, I'm actually reorganizing some money that just fell out of my pocket. <laughs> Seriously, uh, I just went to get something out of my pocket and a bunch of cash fell out. So it's bursting at the seams. Um, anyways, my friends, uh, we have, as I said, an amazing guest on this morning. And uh, just a quick reminder that... All of our guests are brand new, ordinary, well, not brand new to this world or even sometimes the internet marketing world. Sometimes they are, but they are new to legendary in most cases, unless I say that I've interviewed them again and, um, and I have not talked to them. So you're getting to hear the very first conversations that uh, I have and we have with our guests. So with that being said, a former technical recruiter turns digital to gain back time. Yes, I'm talking about Rachel. Please help me welcome Rachel to the show. Hello. Hi, good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Fantastic. You said it was dark where you're at still. Yeah. Where are you calling in from? Um, I'm from Southern California, so it's uh, just seven here, so it's still pretty dark. <laughs> Tried to light up the room a little bit, but it didn't really work. We're going to light you. it up. Thank you for having me on this morning. You're so welcome. We're going to light that room up here by the end of the show. So, uh, Rachel, tell us, you know, how you found Legendary. What were you looking for? Do you feel like you found what you were looking for? Give us a little bit of your backstory and how you got here. Yeah. So I would say, like, um, you know, I stumbled upon Legendary through Chelsea um, back in March. Um, and I followed her and I was like, there's no way this is real. So I just kind of like immediately unfollowed her. Um, but thanks to the algorithm, you know, she kept on like coming up on my screen. Um, but I'd say like, I wasn't really looking for anything, you know, last year, 2022 was a hard year for me and my husband. Um, you know, we had like, you know, my husband had to go to rehab. We had a kid. So it was just like a whole bunch of things going on. Um, and uh, you know, I had just gone back to work and, um, you know, I'd say like maternity leave was like, it was so nice to spending time with my kid. Um, <clears throat> and then once I went back to work, it was like so different. It was kind of just a different swing of things. I didn't have like as much authority as I had before. Um, I was working a lot of late hours. So, um, you know, I was just kind of burnt out. Um, and then I, I, I don't know, like I didn't say anything to anyone. It just kind of like popped up in my phone and there Chelsea was. And I was like, wow, this looks great. <laughs> um, once I started following her again, then I just was like, okay, like, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting how you're open to different things based on how life is going. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I'm not thankful for your pain or struggles, but uh, in some ways, hopefully one day you will be, you know? Yeah. Um, so is this your first time doing anything online, doing any form of digital marketing? Yeah, first time. No work from home stuff before this or anything like that? So I was work from home in my technical job um, okay. probably about since like the pandemic. So 20 Just nine to five stuff where you were sent home like yeah. everybody else. Yeah, but nothing like social media, nothing like that. Just like my personal social media stuff. Wow, wow. Um, and you do have a college degree. You did go to, yeah. Yeah, I have a college degree and a master's actually. So what's it been like for you to be new in a sort of un in and go back to school, but in this kind of weird online way, especially at something that you initially thought wasn't real? What's it been like for you to experience our education and be new at something and compare that to your experience with university? Yeah, I mean, I think I've always just been a learner. Like, I've had to learn a lot of stuff in school. I played tennis and played in college tennis. So I um, I had to pick that up when I was little and young. Um, and then in technical recruiting, it's not like you just learn once and then that's it. Like, you have to keep on learning stuff because tech is 
changing all the time. So, um, you know, I just, I like learning. So learning this stuff was like, it was, it was just mind blowing, mind blowing. So, um, yeah, I've didn't, I've enjoyed every minute of it. So when it came time, um, and you know, you've gone kind of all in here, it looks like you bought our blueprints and you're, you know, really kind of taking this quite seriously, which is, mm -hmm. you know, always, always fun to see from somebody who, you know, again, as, as you pointed out earlier, uh, was very skeptical. Yeah. Um, what's, what's it, I mean, do you feel like you're starting a new career? Do you feel like this is more, although we talk about and use the term side hustle so often, do you really feel, and, and do, do you, do you now look at this as, as a second career? Like what is your mindset now about this and how has your mindset evolved from when you first were dipping your toe and seeing what it was all about? Yeah. I mean, yeah, this is definitely my career. Like I'm, I'm not, I'm no longer at my technical job. I got let go back in August. I mean, mm. that wasn't planned, but it just. Congratulations. Just... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I think that that was kind of just a blessing in disguise because I felt like things just kind of really picked up in my online business since then. So you know, I started growing a lot. Um, September was like a really good month for me. Um, and so, you know, I started at like a thousand followers in August and now I'm almost at like eight or 9,000 on, on Instagram. So it's definitely been growing a lot. Um, but I feel like in my life, it just kind of like, you know, you kind of just move from career to career, but I feel like this is something that I'm like, you know, totally invested in. It's so nice to like have that freedom and flexibility to be with like my kid. And that's, that's like the ultimate goal is to, you know, be more present in his life. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, I've been through a lot of careers. Like <laughs> I was a tennis coach, then I went to enterprise then I was a technical recruiter. So um, yeah, this is like it for me. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Um, well, that I love that so many professionals are coming into our world now um, of internet marketing and digital marketing. You know, it was only just a bunch of us vagabonds there at one time, you know, who were kind of looked at as um, and derelicts, you know, internet derelicts. We were sort of, you know, the coffee shop bums and the people who, you know, wore flip flops and, and, and tank tops. And, you know, there was the corporate world and then there was the underground internet marketing world. <laughs> and, you know, here, here we are really converging upon each other. And, and the pandemic was a huge catalyst for that. Yeah. Um, how did the pandemic change the way that you saw the future, the way that you saw job security, the way that you saw the need for technology and to be familiar with these different mediums and, and, and um, platforms like Zoom and, and things of that nature. I mean, as a professional, as somebody with a master's degree, all the things that society, I mean, in all, all, in all respects, you're well qualified to, to, to have an opinion. Um, what did you learn from that as a former corporate woman in terms of how things are changing? Yeah, I mean, um, so during the pandemic, I know like a lot of people were, lo were losing their jobs. Um, for me, like the opposite kind of happened. It, um, it, I grew in my career like a ton. Um, <clears throat> and it was like the highest po point in my moment where I was making a lot of money. Um, so I was making great money at this job, but, um, I did work in mortgage. So at the time where most companies were laying people off, mortgage was doing really well. Um, <clears throat> and so now mortgage is not doing great, but, um, so that's kind of why, you know, I got let go, but, um, yeah, I'd say like the pandemic definitely changed everything because I wanted to be home. I didn't want to go back to work and they wanted us to go back to work like two or three days a week. And I was just thinking to myself, like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't want to leave my kid at home. I like won't see him in the morning. I'll see him for like maybe two hours at night. And then that's it. Um, not only that, like somebody else is going to be raising my kid. Like that just didn't settle well with me. So, um, so yeah, it's definitely changed 
my outlook on everything, even becoming a mom obviously has changed my outlook on a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. We, we don't know what we don't know. That's a great example of, we don't know what we don't know. We just yeah. are moving along, going to our job. It's all fine. We don't have a problem really with somebody else raising our kid or kind of do, do go in there, hanging out at the office for eight hours a day, sitting in traffic for two. But then once we get a taste, because that's just what we were told growing up was the pinnacle of life. So yeah. you sort of look around and you say, well, everybody else is doing it. So it's not that bad. But, you know, we kind of suck it up and say, this is life. That's life. Life's not fair. That's li But then we get a little taste of freedom, of yeah. being not answering to somebody or not going in and, and, and clocking in. And being able to be with our kids throughout the day and just learning how to manage and realizing for the most part that many of the jobs that we're going into the office doing can be done from home. <laughs> yes, they can. Can be done from home. And I'm reading more and more articles and, and interviews now where CEOs are saying that, you know, people can't work at home. They're incapable, all of these. And, you know, we just had a, a student mastermind, but also a team mastermind the last three days here. And I did nothing but praise our team over and over and over and over again for being, for, you know, proving that it can be done for being uh, self-starting and, and, and responsible and working together. And we have nearly 200 people who were all around the world yeah. who are working from home in a team environment, not just as solopreneurs, we're working together. And, and not to mention all the, the people inside of our community who are learning these skills. I mean, we as a company are eating our own cooking. Our, yeah. our people are living the laptop lifestyle, if you will. And, and so, you know, people are still swallowing this pill, but we're definitely not going backwards. Yeah. We're definitely not ever, we're, we're not going to get to a place to where all the people who just went through being home, and although, the, though it was tough, it was enjoyable, are going to go, you know what? I really actually love being in the office more than I like being at home. I, I just don't think we're ever going to go back to that. It's going to take like multiple generations to get back to that. And I think we're going to have moved on. What, so in other words, these skills of learning how to navigate the internet, how to monetize the internet, how to use social media, I think are skills that we all need to learn, whether my friends, you learn them here at Legendary or not. It's, you're not going to hurt my feelings you're not going to hurt our feelings. It is what it is. Learn them. Just learn them. And if you resonate with our community and what we're talking about and 830 interviews of real life successful people that are doing it, then, you know, take the plunge. Let's talk about you taking the plunge. You went to go start creating marketing content. What was that like for you to get on video and start to put yourself out there? And what sort of limiting beliefs popped up in your head that you've had to overcome? I mean, it I think everyone goes through this. I think everyone's just like scared out of their mind to like be on camera. <laughs> um, I hated it. Um, but, you know, I think after you get like the first three videos out, it's it's really not that bad. You know, it's like it kind of just flows after that. And I feel like it just got so much easier. It's just like, you know, it just became like a routine in my life. You know, it's like just like brushing my teeth or like getting ready for the day. You know, it's just become so just like a natural routine. Mm. Wow. Wow. Interesting. So did you have any uncomfortability seeing your face, hearing your voice? I mean, did you find yourself editing and re-editing and re-watching and critiquing videos to the point to where it drove you crazy? And have you overcome that now or has that gotten easier? Um, I think... <laughs> the first time I shot a video, I think it took like an hour for like a talking video. Um, <laughs> but now it's gotten a lot easier. Um, and I'd say like before I would like do a lot of edits and like go back and, you know, I don't like that video, so I'm not going to post it. Um, but now I'm just kind of like, well, whatever, we'll just post and see how it goes. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's, you, I think one of the biggest, one of the biggest um, concepts to understand here is, is, that nobody can really tell you that something's going to be successful except the marketplace. Yeah. And by the marketplace, I mean all of the people who are out there who are going to be receiving and responding to your marketing. No 
coach, no guru. I mean, we have a blueprint, we have a formula, we have frameworks, we have strategies that we use that are, are proven to work uh, better than others. You know, if you want to have an email list that you can follow up with people, which in my opinion is way smarter than not having one that you can follow up with people and continue to monetize and continue to send more. Well, there's a certain framework and formula for doing that. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but at the end of the day, all marketing as is a test in your, com, com, you know, comparing to form things that you've done in your former life and career is the, there is that is that testing versus that, in that 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 finite answer that if you do this you're going to get this result how have you embraced the marketing is a test approach and not not gotten so caught up on staying stuck in and having having to have somebody tell you exactly what to do <laughs> to get a perfect result yeah i mean i i like it a lot more i don't I've never been that person where like, I, I don't enjoy somebody telling me what to do. <laughs> um, so I like testing and I like trying new things. Like um, one of my videos that went viral, um, you know, I had posted it once it got like 400 views. I posted it another time. It got 16,000. I posted it a third time and it got 110,000 views. Um, and that was just like the first time of just like trying to like, you know, okay, let me just see if this will work again. Um, but, you know, uh, my, my, my parents owned a business. So I've always kind of like been interested, interested in marketing. Um, you know, my, my degree is actually in marketing, but I never learned anything about affiliate marketing. And say like this course, like literally taught us, taught me so much like knowledge. <laughs> and it's crazy. It's like you get so much value for, what you're paying for instead of like, you know, a college degree or a master's degree even. So. Yeah. Um, you know, people think that our curriculum is expensive and many of them forgot what it costs to um, move up the ladder in the real world. Uh, the, the belly to belly traditional world. Um, and, uh, I, I appreciate you saying that it's a great reminder. So let's talk about, you know, Instagram, this, this seems to be your favorite platform right now. Yeah. Uh, and where a lot of our marketers in our community are putting a lot of their, a lot of their attention. So what is, if you were to, if one or two things were to stand out about what you've done right on Instagram, and how you would coach yourself if you were starting all over again, what would be those things that you, that stand out to you And any other on the, on the flip side, any things that you wouldn't do again, if you were to start all over marketing on Instagram? Um, <clears throat> all right. Things that I wouldn't do is in a lot of my beginning videos, I would say like find the link in my profile, like don't do that. <laughs> You're just trying to find gain followers at the beginning. So like you need people to trust you and you need people to like understand what your page is about. Um, so that's one thing that I would definitely do. And I didn't create a lot of value in the beginning. And I think um, in the beginning, like you really need to create a lot of value because if somebody's going to go visit your page, they want, you know, selfishly, they want stuff what's good for them. You know, they want to learn about how to make money online. Um <clears throat> But things that I've done recently that have kind of boosted my follower count is adding keywords. So like if my video is about side hustles, like I'm going to put side hustles in the talking video at least one or two times. I'm going to put it on the words on the screen. I'm going to put it in the captions at least, you know, two or three times. Um, and I think that that helps the algorithm pick up on, you know, what you're what you're putting out there. Um and then I'd say like the other thing is like I started in the beginning of my videos instead of like going right into what I'm talking about. I tell them like, hey, follow me because, you know, I post about these three things or um, save this video for reference because, you know, I don't wait until the end of the video to say that. Um, and I think that that has updated, like added to my follower count. Interesting. 
Interesting. Interesting. Giving them a call to action at the beginning of the video versus at the end. I actually um, did it twice. So like in the beginning and at the end. Okay. Yeah. Um, also great point. You know, we were just in the, in, in the mastermind this weekend and we had Caroline hanging out and Becca and Chelsea and, 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 you know, Phil and, and, um, you know, uh, Kelly and M Walcott and all the people, um, many of whom many of you know, and, you know, one of the things that stood out, I think from Chelsea's talk was, you know, get not really just telling them to follow at the beginning in that growth phase, you know, building your follower account. Well, many of you don't have uh, a lot of followers at the beginning, nor did anybody else when they started, you know, it's, that's yeah. a hilarious question that I've seen asked often is how many followers did you have when you started? And, you know, 9.9 out of 10 people who started this started a brand new profile and just built it up from the, and then some of them have had their profiles deactivated because that's just the land of the wild, wild west internet where sometimes when you're getting tons of traffic and tons of traction, you know, something may happen with your profile, who knows what, and you may lose it. But because they know how to build followers and gain followers fast and they know how to drive traffic, the amount of followers that they have is not irrelevant, but it's not even as important. Because you're always looking to get in front of new people anyways. And for those who do follow you, they're just seeing your stuff over and over again. And, and that is helpful for them to, to re-see it. And, and, and um, as, as you talked about, Chelsea, at the beginning of the, of the video, to, to have a, a second look, a third look, a fourth look. Mm -hmm. um, so how how do you then drive people into your funnels and how do you get people to opt into your landing pages? There's the growth phase, there's the sales phase. Mm -hmm. How do you go um, from, you know, just building followers to then also generating leads and sales? Was there a certain point in which you started directing them more to your link? What, do you talk about it more once you've built, built a certain amount of followers? Talk to us about the difference for you between, you know, gaining followers and actually generating leads and sales. Yeah. So um, if I'm doing like kind of like a growth video um, at the end, I'll ask them to comment below if they want my free guide. Um, and then once they comment below, then I'll send over um, I'll send them a, a message. Um, and I think that that's really helped on conversions, conversions. Um, and then I also kind of switched up like the way that I'm strategizing um, posting. So I post three times a day. Um, usually the first video is either like a, um, like a side hustle or a way to make money online. The second video is always educational. So it's always about affiliate marketing. Um, and then the third video is um, it's a talking video. And so it's either, um, you know, uh, a side hustle or, um, you know, more educational on affiliate marketing. So um, I think that that's definitely helped to, you know, bring in more conversions because like um, they're getting a lot more value in the second video of knowing like what that is. And the third video is really to try and get people to, you know, follow me. Um, since I feel like most of my viewers are viewing videos at night, that's when I want to grab all those followers. You're also giving them multiple three different looks throughout the day of different types of content. Mm -hmm. You know, you're giving them more of a, of, as you said, side hustle or just um, more generic. Then it's more specific in that midday video. And then it's a trust building mm -hmm. and you're talking to the, to the camera. I think that's a wonderful, I think that's a wonderful combination. And it also gives you a routine. Let's talk a little bit about how you found your groove. You know, sometimes people start working from home or, of course, especially if they still have a job and they're trying to fit things in. How are you managing your time? What what does your day look like? How have, how have you found your routine? I mean, obviously, you just gave us your posting routine. What mm -hmm. other routines or grooves have you found that have helped you to manage your time and feel like you're, um, you know, not spending all day on your phone or in front of your computer. I mean, just tell us how you're, how you're navigating this and setting boundaries for your own self to, to be able to find some time management when really 
you could be doing this all day or be doing nothing at all. You're really in charge of your schedule. Yeah. Um, in the mornings, I usually wake up before my kid. Um, and I do like a little bit of man manifesting. Um, so I do the five, five, five method, which, um, I grabbed from Becca and Caroline. Um, it's super helpful. Um, but it just kind of gives you like that positive mindset going throughout the day. Um, and then most of the day I'm either, you know, running around doing errands, I'd say until like 12. Um, and then I usually do, I usually only create content on Mondays and Thursdays, um, because my son's at school. So, Mondays, I do like a bunch of videos. I do a lot of batching. Um, mm -hmm. Same with Thursday. And then um, and then at night is when I just edit them. Wow. So you're yeah. only creating content literally on two out of two days out of the week. Mm -hmm. Wow. 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 That's really something. Yeah, um, that, that that is that is mind boggling to think. Um, of course, you mentioned the 555 method. Um, this is something that Caroline and Becca teach, and it's something that, that is their, um, their, their proprietary information in a sense. But can you just give people what, what does that mean? I mean, what is it at a, at a very high level? Yeah, so basically um, you write down what your goal is. So, um, for instance, like if you're trying to get your first commission, You'd write that 55 times every day for five days. Um, and I actually kind of like, I created like a, a higher goal. Um, so like more unachievable. I don't know if they recommend that, but I did it. Um, and so I'm going to do that for 55 days. Um, but it definitely like just helps you stay positive and, and um, you know, just kind of gives you like the right mindset because it can be like daunting sometimes when you're not getting commissions or you're not getting a lot of followers. So you kind of have to always have like that positive mindset, like it's going to turn around, it's going to happen. So, um, yeah, I think that's definitely been so helpful. Okay. So it's writing something five times or 55 times, oh, 55 for, five times. for five days. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's some serious handwork. Yeah, it hurts your hand after a while. So what is what I mean, that's sort of a written affirmation. That's the mm -hmm. manifesting that you're talking about. You're sitting there, you're writing something. You're basically training your brain to believe that. T tell me how you how do you write something out in a way that helps you to believe it? Is it I am on my way to earning my first commission? Like, what is how do you manifest? And of course, it could be if you're doing this 555 method, or if you're just talking to yourself and learning and training yourself to talk to yourself in a new, more empowering way. How do you how do you say that to yourself? Yeah, so like you want to put it in a way where it's already happened. So I'm so grateful I received my first commission today. Mm. I'm so grateful I, I create I received my first commission. Okay. Over and over and over and over again. I love making ten thousand dollars a month. I love <laughs> yep. making ten thousand dollars a month is easy. Making ten thousand dollars a month is easy. Money flows to me effortlessly. These are all things that can not only be written, but of course can be can be we can we can say these things to ourselves um how has that changed the way in which you talk to yourself i mean do you are you acting as if you're already a millionaire like are you like how and, and i know that sounds funny and i'm not talking about walking around like you know throwing hundies around and just being irresponsible but i'm talking about the way that you carry yourself the way that you speak to yourself, the way that you allow others to speak to you, like the little things like receiving compliment, like how, how are you changing the way that you, not only you laid out the five, five, five written manifesting method, but how, what are, what, how are you affirming yourself, validating yourself and um, acting as if, if you are, that you already are successful versus waiting until you actually are. And that's hard to kind of bridge that gap because it's like you sort of have to develop the confidence before you actually achieve the goal because people are attracted to confidence. They're attracted to successful people. Mm -hmm. And so 
there's this element of acting as if, how are you doing that? And how are you manifesting in the verbal and physical ways, not just writing things out in, in the morning, as you as you said? Yeah, I'd say like that definitely is a confidence booster. Um, <laughs> but like, just like getting up and getting ready in the morning, I like when I used to shoot videos, it used to be like so dark in this room and I'd do it like in the beginning of the day or at the end of the day because I just didn't have time. Um, and like, I wasn't just like, I wasn't writing down anything. So like you could see like in the beginning of my videos, they were terrible. <laughs> um, but if you look at some of my videos now, like you can definitely see like a difference in the way that I talk and like, as if like, you know, things have already happened for me. Um, and even just like the way that I talk to my spouse now is like so different because it's like, oh, yeah, like I hope like I used to say, like, I hope that we get to this one day, whereas like now I'm just like, OK, when we get to this, like this is going to happen, you know, next month or so. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, it just kind of just definitely like changes your whole way of thinking. Yeah, I love that. And that's that's exactly what speaking your you know, speaking your um, reality, speaking what you want into existence. You know what I mean? Like, like it, so often we do the hoping and praying and kind of, I hope somehow magically this is going to happen in my life. Or, I mean, I think you worded it just, just perfectly. Like, I hope that, like, hoping is not a strategy. Yeah. Like, it's not. It's just hoping is a, a, a great way for nothing to happen. Like, I hope, I hope I get there one day. Like it's, that's just, that is, that is a, that is a wonderful way to fail. Whereas um, what you just demonstrated is a, is a great way to speak things into existence. And the first person who has to believe that a plan is going to happen is you before you enroll others into your, into your vision. And that includes your spouse. Um, one of the things that I wanted to eradicate and, and did eventually in, within my home was saying that we couldn't afford things. Like, mm -hmm. hey, we don't say we can't afford things. We may not have the resources right now, but we're in the process of being resourceful and finding those resources. And we will have that by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not... it. it, it not being able to afford something is not because there's a lack of money in the world. And it's not because, you know, it's not because of anything except that I just haven't found the resources or the resourcefulness to be able to afford that. And so um, did you grow up in a, in a, in a home or around people who had bad relationships with money? And this is not to throw anybody under the bus, but did you have to unwind some of your limiting beliefs around money um, deeper than just, um, you know, some of these, this manifesting and speaking things into existence that we're talking about? Um, <clears throat> you know, I'd say like my parents, when, when I was growing up, they, they struggled with money. We, um, we owned a business, but um, you know, it was, you know, up and down, just a roller coaster. And um, you know, so I always grew up just, you know, asking my dad if I could get something. And he was like, you know, like, eh, maybe. And then like, you know, I'd go to school and I'd be like, all right, I need money for books. And then he would just kind of get into like a bad mood kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, now they're in a very different place. You know, now they're, you know, much more financially stable. But, um, you know, and I kind of just took that with me <laughs> when I started growing up and being an adult, you know, and then I started getting into credit card debt. And then when me and my husband got married, um, you know, we were just kind of trying to pay off all that debt. And um, and I just feel like anytime that I wanted to go buy something for myself, I was like, mm, do I really need it right now? You mm -hmm. know, <laughs> um, or I just like, you know, I just wouldn't buy it. Um, so, you know, now I think, you know, my, my relationship with money is more like, you know, we can't afford this. We can do this, you know, kind of thing. So. Um, you know, it, it is a lot different than the way that I grew up. What else, what else have you learned about yourself through this process? And tell us when you remind me when you started as well, what was the yeah. month? Um, I started taking the course in April, um, and then I launched May 12th. Okay, um, so in yep. that last May, June, July, August, September, October, it's been a 
five, almost six months. Mm-hmm. What have you been reminded about about Rachel? What have you What have you learned even new about yourself that has blown you away, surprised you, got you excited about yourself in life? Share Share that. Uh, with us and help us to understand how you've kind of grown personally and what you've discovered about you. Yeah. I mean, I think like we all learn that we can do hard things. Um, And this, this was hard for me, you know, (laughs) like trying to put myself out there was hard. Um, But, you know, I'd say like my goals are a lot closer than I thought that they were. Um, You know, we, we have a house in, in California, we're, we were lucky enough to buy this house, um, but it, it's not the house that I want, um, <laughs> you know, so I am a lot closer to getting those goals because of this. And I'm, I have a lot more confidence getting to those goals. Nice. And that's OK to be not where you want to be or not in the home that you want to be. Right. It's mm-hmm. like it's, everything doesn't have to be your end finish line. It can be a stepping stone. And um, I I love that you're looking at your home like that. It's like there's gratitude there and it's not the final destination. Yeah. Um, If you were to go back and give yourself advice, what would you tell yourself when you started that you may not have been able to say to yourself back when you did start? Um, Just stay consistent. It'll work out. (laughs) Um, You know, results will come. It just takes some time. Yeah. Consistency is a big piece. That was one of the things that you talked about in your questionnaire when we invited you on and you filled it out. Um, and we hear about it so much on the show. And it's, it's you know, it, it sounds redundant, friends. It sounds like it's, you know, like it's like there's got to be more to it than that. But um, there really is just, you know, it's like taking swings in the batting Page. I mean, it's like the consistency of taking those swings and practicing this skill set, the skill set of getting in front of a camera, the skill set of writing emails, the skill set of um, training your mindset. It really is a, a skill set. We, we realize even mindset training, um, you're either really good at it or you're really bad at it. And we know that it's a skill because you can get better at it. Mm-hmm. That's how you know something's a skill. If you can get better at it, you know, the way that your, your hair color is not, well, you can change it, your hair color, but it's not a skill, right? You see, you were born with that. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, our, our culture, our, you know, our skin, these things are not a skill, but anything that we can change in terms of improving or getting better is a skill. And we realize, and I wonder if you have also realized Rachel that, a lot of the, the, the things in life that you need to succeed at this are skills and you can't improve them. And do you, do you actually believe uh, that you are just still like a little baby fetus, that you have so much to go and that you're nowhere close to where you, uh, your destiny is in terms of how good, how successful, um, how, how far you can take this? Do you believe that within the last five to six months, you've gotten to a place to where you actually believe that now? Oh yeah. I feel like I'm just at the beginning. I'm just like, just scratching the surface. Like there's so much more to learn. I feel like I learned something every day in this business. And the more that you're on camera, the more that you're posting, the more that you're practicing and doing this as a routine, like the better that you're going to get every day. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> With that being said, my friends, we're going to wrap up and leave it there. Um, Rachel, it's been wonderful to start the morning off with you. And, and it, you know, the sun is rising. The sun is shining. It's another day um, and another opportunity to be able to, uh, you know, achieve your dreams and, and help people. Same with me. And thank you for starting the day off helping and, and serving our nearly 500 people that's been on here live the entire time. Um, so stay legendary, my friend, come back and keep me posted on your journey in the near future. And, uh, thanks for a great show. All right. Thank you. See ya. All right, my friends, you can find Rachel over at Rachel side hustle on Instagram. And then you can, you can actually, let's see if we've got, we've got our TikTok handle here as well. Rachel side hustle one. And that's spelled R-A-C-H-A-E-L, side hustle, one, 
on TikTok, and it's just Rachel Side Hustle over on Instagram. My friends, if you want to get a text message reminder every time we go live in the morning, you can text WUL, the letters WUL, to 813-296-8553, 813-296-8553. Every single morning at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, we will send you a gentle little reminder. We will never sell your information or spam you, my dear friends. Um, that's just not what we're about. We're about doing things the right way and, um, and, uh, practicing what we preach. And so go ahead and sign up for that list and we'll text you every morning at 10 a.m. Eastern time. Whenever we go live, my friends, I'm on my way home. It's been a beautiful, wonderful. I am the last one here. Isn't that, isn't that something I, I've got some people out there as well, but I am. I will be, I will be uh, walking out of here, our mastermind mansion here in Orlando, Florida, uh, and shutting the door on another fantastic event. You can probably see from lots of the different uh, people who were here, including right here on this page, videos, uh, parties, content, speakers, the event, all the things. Um, we have another event in December. That one's already sold out as well. Uh, but we hope to see you at one of the future mastermind events. You can, of course, get with your business plan advisor to sign up and upgrade and grab your ticket now so you can be ready and actually come to one of these events. Uh, it, they are just life changing. But if all else fails, my friend, get into the challenge, get into the blueprints. If you can follow the proven formula for learning these digital marketing skills and actually putting them to work. We've got four different business models that we teach here. And these are transferable skills that can be used in any niche to promote and monetize any product. It's a beautiful thing. It's a powerful thing. And you can see that we've got story after success story proving and showing you that it's not gurus and goblins only who can be successful with this. It's regular, ordinary people who are transitioning from all walks of life into this digital world. And so you're worth it. Do it. You got this. You can do hard things. And guess what? It's worth it. So put your seatbelt on. It's going to be a wild ride. Meet us back here tomorrow for another episode. My friends, get out of here. Have a blessed, wonderful, powerful, legendary day. And of course, yourself, be legendary. Get out of here. Peace.